Hey friends, today we're going to look at Ableton Delay, which is their basic delay device. But in this video, instead of using it in your classic delay format, we're going to use it in some really unconventional ways. And what this is going to allow us to do is to make all kinds of like really interesting audio effects. So check it out. Here I've got this kind of basic jam I got going on. So the first effect I want to show you is the classic vinyl stop. And I've got a delay here. Just check it out. This is what the effect is. So, how is this done? Well, let's go ahead and design this from scratch. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to grab an Ableton Delay. So originally, Delay was created by taking a, a tape head and feeding a bunch of tape through it and recording onto that tape and then having another playhead later on and that playhead would listen to what you just recorded and play back that. And then as it went back through the, the system, it would re-record the next thing that you played and so on and so forth. And if you slowed the tape down or if you sped it up, you would get <clears throat> different amounts of delay time, okay? And that would be awesome, but, but the process of slowing that tape down or speeding it up would actually change the pitch. And so when Ableton implemented this uh, new delay, they had three different modes that you can jump through over here. And the first one is repitch, and that's what we're taking advantage of. So if I unsync the delays so that they're free to move around, okay, basically what that means is that I can now repitch as I change this delay time, it'll repitch the sound that's coming through it. So this is the entire mix, because this is sitting on the master track, right? So I'll turn my feedback all the way down, because I don't need echoes. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm actually just looking for the pitch parts, right? So check this out. So if I have this all the way down, as low as it'll go, which is one millisecond, check this out. I can just... Right? <laughs> So essentially all I'm doing is, uh, is I'm increasing delay time with the repitch mode on. And the way that I pulled this off was I just made, uh, you know, as you can see as I move this, the automation curve is moving so I can just, you know, double click, make some break points. And... <laughs> so you might be wondering, all right, well, that's cool, but how do I use this? How do I record this? Well, you know, you could just make a new audio track like this one, and you could say input from master, right? And then you could just record with the auto switch off <laughs> and check this out. Right, so now I've got that captured. I can turn this off and now it's just hanging out. And so I can maybe group all these together, make a mute. Boom. Now we've got... <laughs> right, so now it's in the mix, okay? So that's the first move, kind of the vinyl stop effect, right? The next move I want to do is I want to look at the drums. So check this out. I have this delay plugin sitting here, okay? And I'm just going to turn it on for this second section, okay? And we'll take a look at the automation. So here's the drums. Here's this effect. <laughs> so essentially what's happening here is I'm just automating the delay time and it's kind of moving around, right? Blah, 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 blah. Right? So <laughs> all I have to do is make a new audio track, right? I'll choose the one drums to go into this track, right? So I'm just feeding this track into this track. It's armed and I'm just going to record this. So... <laughs> That's pretty sweet. So now I'm going to delete this plugin off of this track. Just commit, right? And then now I've got this great set of audio here to work with. So let's just say I'll drag this out of the way over here somewhere, okay? And I'm going to listen to this and find the nuggets, right? Where are the nuggets at? That's kind of cool. Cool. So you can select areas of time using the grid or not using the grid, it's up to you. In this case, I can un I can not use the grid just by uh, right clicking and going to off, right? Fix grid off. And then I can just grab sections of time. 
hit Command E. That'll split the audio. So I can just find all the really fun samples. That's kind of fun too, I like that. Command E, let's find another one. That's cool. Command E, and maybe this last weird thing. Ooh, I kind of like that. And the last thing. Okay, cool. So now I've got some, you could think of them as sort of like vinyl scratches, right? So what I can do is I can turn the grid back on, okay? And then I can drag some of these out. These are some of the samples that I liked. And I'll just kind of place them over here. It's just good to, to make room for yourself, you know what I mean? Like it's good to to do this kind of work so that you can, you know, get the stuff you don't need out of your way. And it's good to work, in my opinion, it's good to work from the right hand side, assembling what you want to use, and then dragging it into the left hand side, which is sort of like your composition, right? So now I've got all these samples, and I can go in here, and now that the, the delay isn't on here, I can start dragging these samples in here, maybe where I'd want them. So in this case, I have, this is kind of cool. Maybe this could replace a snare hit. We'll just listen to the drum tracks for now. So now that this is off time, if I click on the top of this and hold Command or Control on Windows, I can move this over, right? And maybe this will work in time better. I don't know about that last hit. Let's let's find out, huh? And I know this is a little bit quieter, so I can just boost the gain, right? So now we've got. Nice, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and populate this real quick. Okay, so check it out. Here's the loop that I've made. <laughs> right? So I'm just using delay and just scrambling it up. Another thing that you can do is you can just grab a delay, okay, and we'll set this up again. Repitch mode, no feedback, fully wet, turn off the sync, and now we've got our little scratcher, right? Another thing we can do is just, this track is set up to record this track. I could just record into this track and just mess with the control. Right, and look, I've just captured all that wackiness. So I could just go in here and find the nuggets again. Right, and further edit my, you know, my drum pattern, okay? So that's just another way you could do that. Now, at this point, you're like, well, you just have one track with all your drums on it. Well, let's say you have a bunch of tracks making your drums that comprise your drums. Uh, you could just put a delay on the entire group. You could group all those drums together, put the delay on the entire group, and then record that into a new audio track and call it glitches or whatever, you know what I mean? It's that simple. Real quick, I wanted to let you know that I'm also creating Ableton online courses, and I am so close to finally being able to launch these uh, mid-November is what I'm thinking, mid-November 2020, so next month. Uh, really stoked about this. Uh, they're going to be covering topics like mixing, sound design, composition, songwriting, live performance. You can learn anything that you want to learn on YouTube, but most of the time that information is kind of not presented in an organized way. Uh, if you like my teaching style and you're tired of searching for those things on YouTube, uh, I highly recommend that you uh, slap your email in the link in the description and in the comments and in this little right-hand corner link right here. And just uh, put your email in there and I'll let you know when the courses are launched, okay? So let's get back to it. Okay, so moving on. Let's take a listen to this track. This is pretty interesting. So this is the uh, Rhodes track that I had. Sounds like this. I'll turn it up a bit. So yeah, kind of boring. Nothing really going on with it, but check it out. Check this delay effect out. So this is like sort of like lo-fi thing going on. It's kind of cool, right? Well, how are we doing this? Well, let's go ahead and do this from scratch. I'm gonna cut this out. So we're gonna leave the delay on repitch mode. Dry wet's gonna be all the way up. We're gonna turn the sync off so these delays are now no longer tied to the clock, okay? And then we're gonna turn the feedback all the way down, all right? So, so for the most part, this is set up exactly the same way. However, another thing I wanna do is I wanna look at this time modulation control. Okay, so what this does is this will modulate the delay time. If I have the delay up pretty high, this can get pretty wacky, right? So.
what this is basically doing is it's modulating slowly it's using somewhat of a what sounds like a like a skewed square wave to change like an LFO to change the delay time right and you can speed it up or slow it down so this is what it sounds like kind of slower right but then you can speed it up real fast <laughs> right but that these 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 levels are kind of not useful for us and this is going to push the roads out of time which is not what we want but if we have this on really low delay settings okay it's going to take a lot more modulation to do this but i'll put it kind of back at a lower speed check this out as i turn this time up and we're at low uh delay speeds you can get some a little bit of pitch uncertainty, okay? Just a little tiny bit. Uh, sounds like kind of weird, right? As I turn the rate up, hear that little uncertainty? That's just so awesome. It sounds like recording onto a tape uh, over and over and over again, and you've just kind of wrecked the tape and you've kind of messed it up. And if you want to further this kind of like tape kind of effect, you can reduce the, the filter, right? So you can make the filter a little bit more uh, narrow to get kind of less bandwidth. right <laughs> now if you increase the delay time just a little bit it starts to really especially if you have this high percentage here it'll start to really move around kind of further making the signal worse and worse right and lower rates will give you that kind of boards of canada kind of thing Another thing you can do is you can uh, bring this back in with the dry wet control, and this will give you sort of like a kind of like a vintage modulation pedal sound, right? But for me, I prefer the the wet all the way up. Now, because there's a little bit of delay here, right? In order to make this effect, let's say we used five milliseconds. You have to be careful here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new track. Audio in from three electric. I'm gonna record it real quick. Now, this signal is going to be a little bit later than this signal because we've got the five milliseconds of delay. So all you gotta do is get in here. Uh, you can do this one of two ways. You could either hold command and drag this back to work it, or you could double click on this and right click on the first transient and say just set one 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 here right and it'll just move the audio over and then it'll be perfectly in time so to prove it this is off right so check out this bass track now check this out whoa what's that <laughs> sweet effects what's going on here well let's check this out i've now left repitch mode and i'm on to fade mode okay so using fade mode what this does is that when you change the delay time instead of changing the pitch like a like an old tape deck would or a tape delay deck what will happen instead is it'll fade from the old delay time to the new delay time and some of you might be like well that sounds like granular synthesis yeah it actually is this is sort of a, a kind of a fixed window granular synthesis uh, setting okay so you can get all kinds of really cool uh, wacky effects by changing the delay time and what I did is I just went ahead and used the uh, the modulation but let's just turn the modulation off for now and check this out so do you see if I take this and slowly move it up you can get these really cool suspended notes So obviously, you know, I could go ahead and make a new track and record this, the output of this, and put it into this track. But you, I've already shown you how to do that with the drums. What I want to do is I just want to keep exploring this. So in this case, that's what happens when you open it slowly. Right? But if you modulate it at different faster rates, you get some really interesting effects. Check this out. Now I'm using a lot of modulation here. Maybe we'll use like... 70.
Now, another thing you can do is you can turn up the feedback. Check this out. And if I turn the rate back down, that comb filtery kind of sound really starts to take over and it sounds great. Now, as you can see, if I turn the modulation all the way down, we just get a classic comb filter, right? So. Right. But if I turn the, the, the modulation time up, we're moving that comb filter around very quickly, right? Super interesting effects. Now, the final mode is called jump. Now, what jump will do is instead of fading between or repitching between different delay times, it'll actually just jump between them very quickly, right? So it'll just, it's gonna make kind of like glitchier, clickier sounds, right? So check this out. <laughs> and of course, if you do these big sweeps again, you get this really cool. <laughs> really cool suspended glitchy notes, right? Now, up until this point, we've been doing all of these moves, and it's been really fun, but everything we've done has pretty much been in, in, in a mono sense. Delay is really great for making stereo uh, by, by way of the, the Haas effect, uh, meaning that the left and the right channels are kind of unsynced. Now, what we've been doing though is we've been mainly messing with kind of like really, really super fast delay times kind of in the comb filter area, which is basically everything under 35 or 34 milliseconds, right? So, but in this case, we can also click on the ping pong button. And what this does is it takes the left signal and the right signal and makes the delay bounce back and forth. But look at how low our delay times are our left and right speaker are gonna bounce back and forth so fast that you're not gonna be able to tell that that's happening. And what you're basically creating is a lot of really awesome stereo content. So I'm gonna bring this feedback all the way down and go back to fade mode and check out what we've got now. A really crazy, weird, interesting way to make stereo. So without it, and with it, so let's listen to what happens when we do that with the electric. So if I turn on, let's just listen to this as it is. Kind of our cool lo-fi effect. Let me turn on ping pong, check this out. Woo! How cool is that? Now there's all, obviously some, uh, some extreme directionality going on uh, where the left speaker, it's obviously coming from the left, right? It feels really left. One thing you can do is just pan this kind of spread it out, right? But another thing you can do that I think is much better, especially in terms of mono compatibility, is to take a utility, pull the width down a little bit, because this is super wide, right? It's probably out of almost in, in the out of phase area. So I'm gonna turn this down to like 60%, and then I can listen to it again. And to me, that's more of a usable stereo image, right? It's not, it's not so wide that it'll get lost in mono. Okay. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.